All right. This time it works. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Highcast. This episode of Highcast is fi- uh, filmed, <laughs> r- recorded, my gosh, in the studios of Highland FM. Go to highlandfm.org.au to find out more. Uh, Rad Solutions is a boutique consultancy offering youth engagement solutions. Go to radsolutions.com.au. I have with me Madeline Crittenden. We just did about 10 minutes <laughs> of audio that didn't quite record properly. So we, I don't. how do we start this again? Hello? Hi. Um, we were, we were, we started off talking about, uh, I don't know how you got into journalism, some interesting things about the Highlands. We talked about earthworms <laughs> and then we went, we went to Barnaby Joyce and that opened up a whole can of earthworms. Y- y- yeah. That's a, that's a good segue. <laughs> You're a naturalist. You should, you should be in the media. Um, thanks. <laughs> and I shouldn't because I, I <laughs> For whatever reason, I can't get things to record properly. But that's what being an amateur is about. Uh, that's what starting things off without really knowing what you're doing is about. Uh, and what, what, okay. If if you were to give advice to me, so, uh, damn it. I, if you were to give advice <laughs> to me, what would you suggest that I do with this podcast? Okay. Um, oh, wow. Well, I do like the theme, definitely. Okay. Do love that. Um, but I think you're on a pretty good, you know, train of thought here, definitely. I, I really, I, I, I personally would prefer to listen to a podcast that just goes off in tangents and, you know, we it's just tangent. people talking. Okay. I yep. don't I don't really like to listen to podcasts that are very structured. I just like listening to people have a conversation. So I think just to make it as natural and... Sure easy as possible i think that would be the only advice i give you not to put any pressure on it and just see where it takes you i guess yeah okay um where where has this your journey taken you so far in the highlands my journey has taken me all over the highlands um (laughs) i i've done stories pretty much everywhere i think my favorite little place i remember when i first went out to exeter and i didn't even know when i first started here I didn't D- even I'm just checking it's still recording. Yeah. I think we're on board we're now. Good. Yep. Yeah, I didn't even know what Exeter was um, when I first started working <laughs> what is here. Exeter? I was like, what, yeah, what is that? And I went out there and I just thought it was the most beautiful place I'd ever seen. I love it down there. Okay. Down there? In there? Oh. Out there? Out there. <laughs> I love it there. And I think, I think what I have loved most about this job is just getting to see a whole variety of places that I usually wouldn't because, I mean, I've never sat at home before I came here and thought, oh, wow, I really need to visit Exeter. <laughs> I really need to do that. <laughs> but now I love going there and I want to go there all the time. So when, when we were uh, in the first attempt uh, at, at this recording, uh, we were talking about uh, earthworms and a gentleman who found the, the biggest earthworms. What's Apart from that, mm. what's the strangest story you've ever done? <sighs> that was definitely pretty weird. I mean, these giant meter and a half long yeah, fat worms and being and found in a garden the, not just the weirdness of it but i imagine you've what done a four year three year university degree yeah yeah like you think you think that this is what i did it for yeah, no no i think that's what i did it for no. i love that that's what i did it for because you find all of these weird and wacky yeah okay stories that like and they're the ones that do the best you know i, I think you know these wacky stories that people don't usually hear about and they're the ones that people love the most. People don't want to read about, you know, a politician walking through town or whatever. Okay, so let's get back to, that's open the Barnaby one again. <laughs> so why do people want to read about Barnaby? I think just because it's so scandalous. So, okay. Like so he's impregnated his staffer. <laughs> who is <laughs> choi- considerably... Choi- <laughs> cho- choice words. <laughs> who's considerably younger than him and he had a wife and he has children. So, okay, and this is what we were talking about before. Uh, is that our business? I, d- I only think it's our business when it is in our interest to know. And in this case, I think it is. So, it's because of the possibility, and it's only an allegation at the moment, isn't it? It's not, it's not nothing's been proven. Nothing's it's been proven. It's the possibility no. that public funds could have been uh, expended on on what exactly Tri- trips potentially or for the two of them i'm not sure there's just the the questioning whether that has 
woman. Is it like Bronwyn Bishop where she you know, used public yeah, funds? Yeah, helicopter or whatever, the, yeah. the flights, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, that, and then just whether what he's done, you know, because politicians are like supposed to be these role models of our country, I suppose, and we elect them because we are think, think they are upstanding citizens – and whether do we do we really do we do we really elect someone because we think that they're an upstanding citizen? Well, I mean, would you you would pick the the most upstanding out of your options, what wouldn't do you, you? I don't know. What do you do when you go vote? Do you pick based on? Well, I pick based on what I think how their Didn't beliefs this line, line up, <laughs> how their beliefs line up with mine. And I think do I I'm have a good moral compass. So if their beliefs line up with mine, then I would. So uh, to them. Uh, when I went to vote uh, for the first time in the Highlands, mm-hmm. I saw a whole bunch of candidates that I had no idea what their moral compass was. Mm-hmm. And Did you have so a chat to them? I don't know. I can't remember if they were standing at the front. <laughs> like I had zero <laughs> engagement whatsoever. But I, Probably I, by the sausage sizzle. Yeah. But <laughs> what do they call it? Demo- okay. We'll come back to democracy sausages later because <laughs> I, I was very disappointed during the uh, same-sex marriage debate that we didn't get a democracy sausage. Well, they didn't deliver a sausage well, to your house I, with, the okay. <laughs> with the ballot, what, the survey. What would say. you call? So if you could have a same-sex marriage democracy sausage, what would you call it? A sexy snag. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, no, I'm going to go with that. That was the okay. first thought. Because I, I did a little bit of a poll around it and the, the came back as uh, for, for the gentleman... You, you get two sausages, no bread, <laughs> and it's just, it's called the naked gun. <laughs> and, for, and, and for the ladies, uh, it was two pieces of bread together, and it was called the Elwood. And if you, you're you probably way too young for the Blues Brothers. Oh, so I know who they are. You know the Blues Brothers? Yeah. Okay, in the Blues Brothers, uh, El, Elwood, or is it Jake? They go to a diner, and one of them orders two fried chickens. And the other order is just two pieces of plain white toast. And so that's what the people came back as the democracy sausage for the ladies. Yeah, right. It was the Elwood. Okay. I don't really get it. You don't get no. it? Don't two pieces of white toast. But why? Oh. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. All right. Okay. Oh, no. So this is <laughs> seven minutes of Madeline's life that she'll never get back, not to mention the, the bit where we didn't get it quite... Right. <laughs> so, in in your in your life, did you ever envisage that you'd be sitting in a silly little studio in the Highlands, talking to some clown like me, <laughs> on an episode like this? Yeah, I've dreamed about it for years. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. But I think that's the beauty of this career I've chosen. I get to do weird. How did you choose things. it? Uh, I don't really know, to be honest with you. Sorry, that was probably really loud. That's, um, all, that's all right. <laughs> we, we've, we've ascertained that this is amateur hour here today. So, um, I got into a few different things for uni and just was like, and put my finger down on okay. what journalism. El- what else was it? What's in the mix? Law. Oh, okay. And uh, commerce and international studies were what I got in on. All three, and then I chose journalism. I have this thing about high achievers. I don't. I'm not a big fan of, of high achievers, mainly because you make. I'm the, not a high achiever you make at the, all. You make the rest <laughs> of us look <laughs> <laughs> look pathetic. No. I, don't, I I think I've just like skimmed through somehow. So very. So I ha- don't know. how did you come to that conclusion where it's? I thought, I honestly couldn't tell you. I just I just what, think I was young just and I was the just. Bottle and that's where yeah, it ended I was up. just like, oh, I think I'll I'll try that. Okay. And, I I kind of wanted to maybe take. A year off while I was doing it, or and change did, over. No, because I knew I wouldn't go back and finish. So. So not only just got it done. <laughs> high achiever, but already knows yourself. That's ridiculous. I'm, I think we should call an end to this right now. <laughs> Why? <laughs> no, I just yeah, I, d- I just knew that if I didn't keep doing it, I would stop and like probably still be working in a pub or something. So not that there's anything wrong with that, but I just would feel very unfulfilled. I feel like. So where is it taking you? I don't know. That's, yeah, it's a very good question. I, I have no idea what my next move is at all. No? no Come I, on, you must. I don't. Must have like some I, idea. Because I, I first started in radio myself and I thought that was exactly what I wanted to do. But then I decided I wanted to try my hand in print and now I really like print. So I don't know if I'd go back to radio. I definitely wouldn't do TV. Why, hang on, why not? 
my boyfriend works for Channel 9. And I just really couldn't think of anything worse. And I don't a, like a to do my people, hair in the morning. TV so people, like, do they like the, I don't know, the dirty people of the industry? <laughs> I, ca- I kind of feel like that's what they would be. I just feel like um, they're more intense. Like, you know, they're, they're the ones going into, like, a shop front and being like, give me the CCTV footage. Really? I'm and I, I'm like, eh, whatever. <laughs> I, I actually, I have, I, and this is my uninformed opinion, I, th- I feel like it would be the other way. I feel, really? I feel like TV is like your your no frills. It's like your Franklin's. You need the you need the picture for yeah. TV though. So you need that gripping. But that's my I guess that's my point is because it's so visual, you mm. don't have to have much depth to the actual story because the picture is telling you a thousand. What is it? The picture that tells a thousand, a thousand, thousand words. words. Yeah. So because you're you're able to have you know video, mm. you're, mo- you're moving images with back by sound. You don't actually really have to supply the the thorough detail that perhaps a print or a radio. Yeah, I think I think they still like they just have to condense it down a lot smaller than we do because what do they have a minute and a little bit to tell a whole story? Yes. Whereas we have you know like up to five hundred words to explain something really thoroughly. So I just think we have a little bit more freedom. I think I would say. Because we can be a little bit more thorough at times, and even and even five hundred words that's that's not much. No, it's not much. It is a struggle, like because most people wouldn't know. But when we get our paper and the way we fill it in, so we get a template, and there's a pitch. It says you know a picture goes here and words go here. So you might have written a story because everything goes online first, yep. and then when you want to put it in the paper, it's like overset by 125%. You're like, whoa, how do I cut it? <laughs> I don't want to take those words out. <laughs> and you, you, words are really like when you deal with them every day, become your baby because you're writing them and you're perfecting them and trying to craft them into a nice sentence. And then when you have to get it rid of a sentence, it's like, no, I have an emotional connection to that <laughs> sentence and I don't want to cut it. I, sp- I spent a whole, you know, a minute or five <laughs> minutes producing those words. They fl- Do you use a pen still? Or? I use a pen. I'm, I much prefer if I'm doing like you it. took offence to that. <laughs> no, I think everyone uses a pen. I don't know, do they? Do you? Well, yeah, but I'm not a journal. I, I, I kind of envisaged super journalists with um, dictaphones that, that just print <laughs> um, out everything for you. Or no, I would love that. I much prefer to, if I'm interviewing someone, um, write do you, and do record Do you know shorthand? It. A little bit. Okay. Not like... Not not a lot, but I can get by. I feel like that's uh, from a bygone era. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like uh, uh, men and well, most yeah. probably women from the 70s would be shorthand. I thought I would learn it at uni. Like I thought that was something we would learn and we didn't. And I was really offended so by what, it. So what did you do? What did you learn <laughs> if you didn't learn shorthand? No, no, no. I, I, I <laughs> learned it myself. Okay. Like uh, after uni. Okay. Because I was like, well, there's... So I wanted to go back to something that you touched on about, mm. or maybe I touched on it, about um, your news only gets a short... Uh, sorry, TV news only gets a short opportunity to grab your attention. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lots of talk about um, the news cycle, 24-hour news cycle, and being driven by the need to get your your point across in 30 seconds mm. or in you know, three words or less. Mm. Do you, as in, in the journalism industry, do you do you feel that that's the case? Do you feel that people who can tell a, a story really quickly? Um, and easily understood are the the best storytellers at the moment. Oh, that's a hard question. I don't know, I'm I not used to being asked the questions. I, you need, know? I, um, I feel like I need to video <laughs> this one. The, the facial expressions yeah. are. I think we live in an age where people have very, very, very short attention spans, and if the point isn't put across very quickly and very succinctly and very simply. We just lose our attention and walk away. So I think to an extent, yes, you know, but I think that's always kind of been the way in the same time. Do you remember, I think it was Hemingway. He used to do that. I don't remember Hemingway. (laughs) I don't remember him either. I never knew him, but um, he used to do this exercise where he used to tell a whole narrative in seven words or something. So I I can't remember exactly how this one goes and I'm probably going to make a fool of myself, but he... So I can't even press record, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> it, there, there was some... Um, one he did, and it was something along the lines of... Um, uh, something had, had something to do with baby shoes left on a bar 
or something like that and not exactly like that but something like that you know it was had alluded to the fact that there was an empty beer there a man sitting by himself and baby shoes there so it gave you all these possibilities of what this narrative could be but you whichever way you interpreted it you had that whole story right there so you know he was having a beer and maybe he just wife had just had a baby so why isn't he with her or maybe he was gonna go and see the baby but the baby's not alive anymore like there was all of these possibilities on what could have happened and i think in that same way we need to be able to tell stories very quickly and very succinctly because i think people just lose interest but what about when it's complicated when it's complicated, you just need to have like a grabbing lead that then people want to listen more and don't give them all of the information. So but then that they forced to. See, I, I, it's been a long time since I, I've done anything like this, but is, mm. do, do you still believe in the fourth estate? What's fourth estate? So the, for, the, for, the fourth estate is what? You've got uh, government, the church. Oh, okay. As in the me- like the media yeah, yeah, yeah. is the fourth estate. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know what so, you're talking about now. So... If if we're in an age where people don't care, they've, they're too busy, and we're providing them with just enough to keep them interested but not enough to in- informed, then ha- is the role of the media still the fourth estate? Does it is it still providing the service that that it should? Well, it's good you know. question. This is a very journalisty question. You should be a journalist. Uh, isn't that what I'm I'm doing? <laughs> <laughs> um. I, d- I agree and I disagree. I agree in the way that, yes, we n- it needs to be quick and easy for people to consume. But, you know, we're just altering the way that the media acts. So, you know, so much of the media now is through social media. So I think our role is just changing in the way we inform people. Now, you know, when even the ABC, they'll put up a, a story and they'll do a little write-off on Facebook and they'll have emojis and things in it. You know what I mean? I just think the way that we're received and the way we operate is a little bit different. But I think we are, people are still paying attention. They're just paying attention in a different way. And I think Interesting. Yeah. we need to be a little bit... So, uh, you know, that whole push is towards social media for that's how, you know, the stories get out and things like that. But I think... People just need like a little bit of humour or they need something a little bit exciting now to make them read it if the story doesn't sell itself. Yeah. If that makes sense. I, I, yeah, it makes sense. I don't, I don't have an answer for the, for the question that I've asked. It's something that's sort of I've been pondering for a little while mm. I- in terms of, you know, we were talking about Barnaby before mm. and, you know, is, is the scandal the message? Is corruption the message is message is what you want well but that, i guess that's <laughs> kind of is my, my point yeah. is that it can be interpreted uh if you're only if the listener or the reader or the receiver is only getting a short piece of information but I don't you think that's kind of the way it's always worked that when um, you read a new story, you still, even in the old days when people would read and hold, you know he's a good guy the, he's a bad guy you know days. i think even even when they had the whole thing they would still have yeah, all these different I assumptions, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't know. I, 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 that's... It's like good conversation Yeah, it's what, what, what the, the discussion's about. Yeah. It is it ca- in, in this day and age with, you know, very quick media cycles, mm. how, actually, how long would your one of your stories remain you know, relevant on something just like the Southern Highland News? Is it up for a day? Is it... So all of our stories stay up for... In, in perpetuity ever so yeah. you but upload how, but it how onto the it internet re- how and long is it relevant though? it's not that's you know we have our our facebook and every hour we upload a story on the hour wow. so you know so I even even somewhere small like the highlands mm. the news cycle is every hour mm, mm, yeah. so that's that's crazy yeah yeah like that's what i thought when i came here and they because we have to write a certain number of stories a day and i thought to myself oh my gosh how am i going to do that yeah and then you you would be surprised how much comes through you know even breaking news like yesterday i was sitting at my desk and there was a grass fire and it was just really quick over really quickly put out really quickly but it started really quickly and you know it was all over and done with in an hour 
So the story went up and then it was dead the next hour. And then, so, but, and what's the metrics on that? Like, I, and I don't expect you to give away you know, Fairfax's secrets, but mm. you know, do you are you getting lots of readers who are who are consuming media every hour? Yep. Wow, really? Yep. Even even in somewhere like the Highlands, like I just, I, I and again, I don't understand it, um, which is hence why I'm asking yeah. the questions. Is how how much are people just sitting at home reading? Well, if you think about it. How often do you go on your Facebook every day? Uh, not very often if you're me, but I imagine other, other no, people. No, well, you know, a lot of people, you know, they go out, you know, smoko, yep. jump on your phone, scroll through, go yep. and have a coffee, waiting for your coffee, you scroll through, walking down the street. And if people have liked us on Facebook, then they open it and they see it. And it's like, oh, that's, what's that? And you click, you know, it's just constant. And that's because people are on their phones so consistently. Okay. And that's why that, sort of on the hour is so valuable interesting so it's it's not uh, and i was approaching this you know what what does the media have to take responsibility for but then it's vice versa what do we as consumers have to take responsibility for if we're checking our phones all the time and clicking on everything well you're only responding to what people are asking for right mm. which is regular uh different do you consider it entertainment or do you consider it news what do you actually what do you consider it um bit of both because information or yeah i can i consider it a bit of both i mean um you might put up a story with a bit of a video in it of the person talking about whatever the story is about um or for example there was a woman her name was sheree and she was the first ever woman she hasn't been yet it's coming up to compete in the world bricklaying championships i saw i saw that story yeah, yeah. so then we see, i'm a consumer too yeah <laughs> yeah see so but then we made a little I'm just like everybody else <laughs> we made a little video then of her bricklaying and sped it up and did all these things to see how many she could do in an hour so it is news but then you're also chucking that little treat a little bit of dessert in at the end so what do you consider yourself a- an entertainer no not at all. I'm really I funny, I but... <laughs> <laughs> she's modest too, ladies and gentlemen. Um, no, I don't consider myself... Are you a storyteller? Uh, no, not fact teller. You're I'm an informant. No, um, I just... I just uh, I'm a fact... I'm a, I'm a journalist. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a journalist. I just tell you what's going on and I get the information and collate it and give it to you. And how you interpret that or how you use that, whether it's entertainment or for knowledge, then that's up to you. So it's a, 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 I was listening to a, another a rival podcast uh, the other day and it was about how in America, you know, there is um, factions, media, media factions. Mm. So you've got, you know, on the right, for example, you've got Fox News and everything yeah, yeah. else that goes with that. And on the left, you've got uh, NBC or, yeah, yeah. or, or whatever. Um, do you consider yourself involved in any way in in factions, in no. media factions? No, so not at all. As a, as an outsider, uh, you feel free to not answer this if you don't feel feel it's appropriate. Yeah. You know, Fair, Fairfax has a, a as a perceived left a left leaning. Was is that you know, a fair a fair assumption? Um. Uh, I'm and if this is not appropriate, we can, yeah. we can... I mean, I don't think I can answer that. Yeah. I think, But I think in a place like this, like the Southern Highlands, I don't... Don't reckon it gets down that far? No, not at all. Okay. I think we just, you know, we're reporting on what happens here and what people are bringing... A lot of the time, people are bringing things to my attention. Sure. So, and telling me about things. It's easiest job ever. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> So, yeah. Madeline's details are... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. <laughs> get, Give me get, your tips. Um, yeah, get, like a lot of the time... Pe- <laughs> I'm not a big fan of working. <laughs> <laughs> Write my stories. You can email them too. Um, <laughs> no, but yeah, I... People are coming to me, so I think I am catering to what people want to read here. It's ridiculous. It's too easy. Here, here was I imagining that I'd be sitting across from the hardest working journalist in town, but here she is telling me that she doesn't need to do anything really. I sit at my desk and I twiddle my thumbs all day long. I am really never run off my feet. I, I, I am really surprised that there is such a demand for for just local news. What? Sorry, go on. No, I, I'm also very shocked by it. Um, why, do, why do you think that is? 
I just think people, obviously people want to know what's going on in their community. I think people are very in tune to that. And, you know, you stick, we have like a community section in the paper where you can put your birthday in or your wedding. And people love that, you know. People want to see who they knew from high school 20 years ago that it's just gotten married, you know. No, really? Yes, yes. And, you know, this person's just had a baby. Of course they want to know what's going on there. Isn't that what Facebook's for though? Yeah, but I think people like seeing themselves in the paper too. But it's not, well, I suppose it is the, the... Do you still call it the paper? Yeah. Even though it's online? Yeah. There's no paper, though. This is a paper. Well, this is a paper yeah, three times a week. Yeah, yeah but <laughs> when it's online, it's not like, it's not like I'm reading... Um, I'm reading the news. I'm reading the news. So is that what you say? Yeah. Really? Yeah. No, I don't say if I'm looking... I, like, have, the, you know, the Sydney Actually, Morning ter- Herald on my tablet because I'm 90 <laughs> and I flick through the paper, like, on the pages. I would prefer to do it like that. Sorry, why did you say you're, you're 90? What? Well, because I feel like people don't actually pick up a paper anymore and actually... Do you pick up a paper? Th- yeah, I love it. Really? I like the smell. Of newspaper? Yeah. I like it when it burns. It's, uh, it's really good to start your fire. Psycho. <laughs> <laughs> I like it burning. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I love it. Tell me it's like an old book, you know? It's like so that what do, smell. What do you consume? Food and water. <laughs> <laughs> Media wise, <laughs> I knew as soon as I asked that question, I was going to get there. Um, I, I follow a lot of different mediums. You know, every day I'll check the Sydney Morning Herald and see what's going on there. So you mentioned that twice uh, now. Is that you go to? Yeah, yeah, and I check also the New York Times. But then I love a lot of other things like pedestrian. Oh, have, what's, what's pedestrian? So pedestrian is like, it's it's news. I would say for younger people. So they're all online. And they do most of their marketing through Facebook. And their stories are really fun. And they make their stories. You know, they'll chuck a few swear words here and there into their stories. And no. sometimes, yeah. How do you feel about swearing? Are you Well, I wasn't sure if I was allowed to swear. But uh, well, we're not supposed to. This is a family program. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, well, I'm lucky I haven't sworn then. Um, uh, I couldn't get less. Swear if you want. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm not offended by swearing at all. Yeah, I, I've got two young children. And my, my, oh. wife, my wife and I have talked about about swearing and mm. I'm like I don't give a fuck <laughs> 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 don't say it don't say it on there uh, well I don't like it's just a word right yeah no I've, I'm I think when I was younger I probably got in trouble but I've grown up like swearing in conversation with my parents yeah but I, I don't understand like, I've what, never what, I how can you associate like what what is it so terrible about this, the F word. The sound. Like this. Is it the sound? It's, like, is it the connotations? Because there's yeah, it's the connotation, and like you know, it was originally a word of anger or you can say anything rudeness. in German, and it sounds worse than a, than a swear. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, look, you just schnitzel. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> schnitzel. It's it's. Uh, I'm going to schnitzel you. It just it's. <laughs> like when you roll someone in the sand or something. <laughs> well, look, it's a, it. it like what is it? It's just a word, right? Yeah. Or it's just it's just, it's just it, it, it is. It is just well, yeah. sounds. Yeah. But really, I yeah. I have, again, it's something I, I spend a lot of time in cars pondering useless shit. Um, <laughs> it, it's not. It's not actually the sound. It's not the the connotation. But it's it's about what I'm saying. Yeah. To you, I think it's just like an aggressive thing to do, or is perceived as, or. Yeah, I, 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 but I, I don't care about it at all. I mean, maybe if someone like was uh, angrily swearing at me, I'd be very opposed to it. But if you're just having a conversation with me and it's I don't care. Why does yeah, that matter to people? I, I feel I feel like swearing has gone the way of suits at work. It's everyone used to wear a suit at work, a suit and tie. You used to dress up to go to work, but nowadays people are like, well, as long as I don't look like a, look like a bum. Yeah, no, I I love a suit though. What, at work or just you just love a suit? I just wear a power suit to the supermarket on a Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, like at work. Like but if someone I walks in a suit, I'm like, oh, love it. A, or like, you know. Ch- as a change? Or, but what if they wore that every day? No, I'd love it. I'd really, really appreciate it. Yeah, so I wish p- more people wore suits. So is that because it Not looks a tie good? though. I don't really like a tie. See, but that's I guess that's kind of my point is that that sort of that formality. Yeah. Slipping away. Yeah. It's it's our generation. Well, I don't know, Matt's probably your generation. I think I feel like I'm a little bit older. Um, so, to, so do you feel that journalism is changing at all? Yeah, completely. And is it just you know it's just changing? I don't think it's. Like tra- I I just think the way in which it's um, put out into the world. I don't think there's anything changing about you know 
the integrity or anything like that. I just think it's changing the way people consume it and the way we put it out. You know, I'm sure 10 years ago there was no focus on getting your stories, you know, um, to be digitally engaging online. Digitally engaging. Yeah. I love Jono the, chat. Uh, yeah, I love I love the buzzwords. <laughs> so give, give me the prediction now in oh, 20 in 2050 what is journalism going to look like? Does oh. it does it exist or is it written by robots? No way. No. Well, I don't lawyers could be robots. There's a whole bunch of things in Canada, for example, where uh, a legal decision can be made okay, by well, an algorithm. I hope that never happens. To journalism or? To both lawyering and the law and journalism. And so how is it not going to happen? Well, I just hope it doesn't. I just hope Elon Musk doesn't do something nifty and make that happen. But it's pretty it's pretty easy. You could write uh, it's well I'm I just build a robot in spare time. Well, no, but you could you could write an algorithm to say, you know, who's pretty easy, what's pretty easy, why yeah. Yeah, all of that stuff's pretty easy. It's yeah. it's the it's the But it's the individual the craft, circumstance. The craft around it is yeah. is is difficult yep. to add, but is uh, is are people going to care about it's the like craft? Making or is a coffee, though, you know, there's a craft of doing it. But I might like mine with a little bit more milk. You might like yours with less. And I think, in terms of judging someone in the court of law, you need to tailor to their circumstance at times. You know what I mean? I just don't think yeah. it's a one. What was that word that we were just using? Formula, Size? one formula <laughs> to algorithm. <laughs> algorithm to work <laughs> out. I forgot the word. Um, one algorithm to to determine something like that. Yeah, it's a a very interesting um, time that we live in. I remember uh, once upon a time I used to work in the media myself, mm. and uh, I remember it was at the, one of the um, News Corp publications, the Daily Sun- Sunday Telegraph. And I remember them talking about newspapers would never die. We've still got 800,000 circulation. I'm like, yeah, whatever, mate. You're dying. Uh, But they're still there. (gasps) They're still there. They're still there. Even if, you know, one day they didn't actually print a hard copy newspaper anymore. When is that going to happen? I have no idea. Is it it five years away? Is it ten years away? I don't know, really. I couldn't even... I couldn't even estimate. Give us a guess, though. Go on. Speculate. Go crazy. I think it'll still be... 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. Really? I think there. Are, I, I worked in a news agency for eight years when I was from when I was thirteen. Is that how you got you the know? taste for for being a journalist? No, I actually did not want to be a news uh, like a hard news daily news journalist at all. Hang on, hard news. Yeah, you know, like I'm a breaking news, police, court that kind of thing. Yeah. And I did not want to do that at all. Um, but here we are. <laughs> um, but you know, every day we would get this enormous stack of papers. And they'd be gone by the end of the day. So even if we think like, who do we know that buys a newspaper? There are still so many people that do, and it actually shocks me. It's uh, I I it's yeah I'm astounded that the newspapers still exist. Mm. I kind of think, you know, really who who reads a paper these days? And in fact, uh, in in my street in the Highlands, it's a fight to pick up your newspaper, not because people want to read it but because they're using it for their fires so, insulting <laughs> so well, it's, the, it's the truth like in in the winter time i have to guard my newspaper wow but think about it if your child was in the newspaper would you go and buy like three or four copies no that's a that's a really i was thinking about this i just gotta stop thinking uh <laughs> the, what would you do if it well, yes yes i would so what do you do if you just got a digital copy where do you save it? Yeah, that's, that's you know, that's, I don't want to, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like same, that. It's the same with photos. Yeah. Now, what do you do? It's so much nicer to have a photo on your wall than in your yeah, camera uh, roll and, on your phone. Um, you know, my parents had photo albums. I, 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 don't, I don't have any photo albums. Yeah, I don't have a photo I album. I wouldn't even know. I wish I did. I wouldn't know where half the photos of me are. Yeah. That that's I, the that's the scary yeah, thing. Yeah, and... and but you know, how do I look? Or back who on has photos of you? D- d- actually, who's do- it doesn't really matter. I'm not really. really? I'm not really. That concerned. freaks me out, though. Like, you know, even like when you're, well, even I know when I go to like a birthday or something, or go out with girlfriends, and people take photos or whatever, and yep. then you send them in a big group chat. Yeah. And then it's like, oh my gosh, that that would. would what if you're in a group chat with all these people? And you're, so I don't want people I don't know having photos of me. There's an interesting line of question. Who owns those? Well. Is it? 
So I can tell you in terms. IPhone? What have you got? Yes, yes, yeah. I'm an iPhone. So if you take a photo um, on an iPhone, is it the property of, of Apple then, or is it? N- mm. If you take a photo on your phone, it is your property. It is okay. not Apple's property. But as soon as you put it in the cloud. If you put it in the cloud, I think they can access it, but it's still your property. And if they would want to use it for something, they w- you they would have to but seek who's permission. Ever, like, who's ever but gonna, even on yeah. Facebook, if I posted a photo of the sunset that this Barry Smith just loved and he downloaded that and put it as his screensaver, I don't have an issue with that by any means, but that photo is mine. Like legally, I own the photo and... You have to ask permission. I didn't even know that until recently. I thought like Facebook was a free for all, but it's not. Hmm. I've been stealing photos for <laughs> forever. I, I yeah, me too. Yeah, I, I I don't have many photos of myself. So if someone takes a photo, I'm like, yeah, I'll use that for my profile pic. Well, you've got to ask because they own that photo. Damn it! This has been the worst podcast yet. Uh, what? Uh, it's <laughs> been the best. I, I've learnt I've learnt too many things that, <laughs> that, that I don't want to know. Ruining too your ma- life. Too many rules. So what? What? Um. So I've a- I've asked you what's next, and you don't know. I don't know. So what's next for the Highlands? Where is Where is this place going? I feel like we're becoming Campbelltown. Okay. Well, I haven't spent much time in Campbelltown, so I'm not really sure. Um. I think we're becoming very populated. I think things are becoming very busy maybe more urbanised in a way. And I think I think we have a lot of outside people coming in. Like even if you go well, to the Southern Highland News, we just a story was just posted about locals being um, outpriced in homes because people from uh, Sydney and Northern I'm one Sydney... I'm like I, I admit, yeah, I'm one of them. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's so difficult for actual locals to get into the market here because it's all becoming very... Um, it's funny. Outside source. It's funny. I left Sydney because I was being, you know, I could afford it, but I would just have a mortgage for 300 years. Yeah. And I never really thought that maybe I'm doing the same thing to somebody else. And like if you're a Southern Highlands local, where, where, where's your Highlands? Yeah. Like where's your regional area that you moved to for green fields? Yeah. Like is it Goulburn? Because that wouldn't be cool. I don't know. Is it green there or just brown? It's brown at the moment. <laughs> My gosh. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't, I don't, I don't know where it's going. I think there's a lot of development happening here, and if things are becoming, you know, less. I think Barrow is always that like quaint sort of country town feel, and it's really expanding from that now. If I made you mayor, oh, what would you do? Um, I'm not sure. I've never thought about that ever. Um, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what I would do. I don't think, for me, that things are happening here that I think I would need to change at all or that I would like to change. I think things are great how they are. Go on. There's a politician right here. Everything's fine. Look <laughs> away. I'm um, a young liberal. No, not at all. That was a joke. Um, <laughs> um, no, She's I don't. She's not joking. <laughs> I am. I am. Um, no, I don't, I don't know what I would do at all. I don't know. No. So I, I I would I talked to um, my last guest Warren Turner and he was he was the, his biggest one was the MBN. Oh the, the MBN. yes, no. Let's fix that. If yeah. I was the mayor, that would we need so, to fix that. So there's things in, in but it's not something you know well you the can. Mayor can fix. So in the United States, for example, whole towns go Google Fiber. What's Google Fiber? So it's well, it's an NBN run by Google. Oh. And so they is that in Australia already? I don't I don't know, but what I'm suggesting is you could, if you had the desire, you could build your own like a network. Network, okay. And if 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 we as a community said, you know what, telecommunications, we're going to be a region that's driven by um, technology, mm. and we're going to make sure that we attract businesses that that thrive on technology, and to support those, we need the best telecommunications yeah. possible then yeah, yeah. if you had where there's a will there's a way right yeah no that is yeah i would like to fix the internet because the, yeah the internet is in pretty much the whole of australia so the mayor that fixes the whole country that would be. Well, there's things there's things like other um local government areas do their own solar power mm-hmm. so they power all of the government all the government facilities the local government facilities using their own solar power for example mm-hmm. so they're not reliant on um, whatever the electricity yeah, provider yeah. is here. Sure. So there's things, you know, not on the scale of Google Fiber that 
that could happen. Yeah. Yeah, I I didn't even know Google Fab was a thing, to be quite Come honest on. with you. I'm just really shook about that. Now I'm going to go home and Google it for six hours. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. I would... I would like to see more young people. I was going to ask. That was the question I was going to say. In town. So maybe think of some kind of a strategy to create that or create an atmosphere that they would want to come to. And is it like, a, is it a party atmosphere? Is it a working no, atmosphere? No, I don't think what so. But probably, you know, I think there just needs to be more opportunity. Um, so even just, you know one or two small bars because what do we have in terms of, you know, you've got yeah, the there's pubs. Three, there's three hotels. But which, you know, grimy. Is, is, there, is there wine bars? Um, you know, there's Bistro Ficina, which I love in uh, near the Barrel Golf. I'm, sh- I'm showing my ignorance here. <laughs> <laughs> I get, I get and young I mean, children. You could, I couldn't take them there. They'd tear <laughs> the place down. And I think you, you could go to Bioda and have a wine or there's the wine merchant in Mossvale or Harry's. Oh, that's but right. yeah, yeah. I think there just needs to be something that isn't too, you know, flashy uh, or they sound, they sound you know, expensive pared too. down. Just yeah, I, I often also think you know, that's the place to go after work. What are people going to do for work? For so, work. So you're, you, for example, have got a great gig in yeah. the centre of Barrel. But yeah. you'd be you, you'd be one. Per, you probably applied for that role. I assume another three hundred people, if yeah. not if not five or six hundred people, applied for yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So I think with the population increase that is inevitably occurring here, that will bring sort of more jobs. But in saying that, I don't think I don't think that will mean that there will be m- that much more work here. I think people will still be going to Sydney or Wollongong. Interesting. Or you know, traveling, but it, it, there just needs to be more here. So even though you can go after work and have a drink, only two, because then you drive home to Wollongong or, or Sydney or, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I just, I don't know. I, I couldn't picture what the possibilities would be for work. Cause it's not like they're going to open, you know, a telco here and have a Telstra office with 300 young employees. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't have an answer for it as yeah. well. But it's you got to. Ha- I guess you got to have the conversation first. Yeah. Yeah. The f- the first thing to do is say, okay, what what is this a problem? And mm. if it is a problem, what kind of solutions can we come yeah. up to th- up with to fix it? I think as well, you know, this is like a family area. It's a family town. So we have so many schools because there are so many families. Yeah. But then when kids finish high school, like everyone, you want to get out. You yep. want to leave your well, hometown. You need to spread your wings. I think people do. I so think most people do. I have so many friends that I met at uni that ended up being from here, Cause I was from thinking, the Highlands. Um, so you got Mossvale TAFE mm. down the road. Why don't we do a partnership with Wollongong or Western Sydney University? Yeah. And, and bring up a campus yeah. up here. And so, you know, I'm all for people spreading their wings. I, I don't, I'm not from the Highlands myself or I wasn't born here. And I've moved down here mainly because I didn't want to be in the same area that I went to school in and you know, never, yeah, never had an adventure. Mm. But it would be really cool to have a technology hub here driven by one of the big universities. Definitely. So that would, I, I think, bring a little bit of um, edu- edu- education, uh, employment opportunities, mm. You know, with those young people around, mm. someone's going to have to open a bar for them. Someone's going to have. It. Someone's going to have to. F- <laughs> you got, what are you going to build the university? That's my next move. You're build the I'll build a bar. For, I'd, I'd love to own a bar. Me but, too. That's. Um, I, I grew up in a pub. A pub. I thought you said a news agent. No, I worked in a news agent, a, but a I, I mean, I agent? lived in a pub as a child. No. Yeah, my family owned pubs. My gosh. I feel like we're going to have to do another podcast. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just really taking up too much of your time. N- no, look, we'll, we'll, we'll end it soon. Yeah. But we'll have to get you back to talk about growing up in pubs. Yeah. But just before we go, um, is there anything else that you've seen through your journalistic adventures or you know, just through your you know, being you around here that make, that you would say you should move to the Highlands because... Autumn. <laughs> yeah, actually, we, we missed that. That was that was in the the previous attempt. Autumn. Really, you really love it I that much. I honestly haven't seen anything more beautiful. We have so many rolling hills and trees lining all of the streets, and it's beautiful. I I remember Anzac Day last year. I went to the um, service in Robertson, and I kind of it was. I think it was at the um, performing arts school. I did this. I was here for this service here. Yeah, right. In Barrel. So. 
I was walking to my car, which was quite a way away because there were quite a few people out, and my feet, well, my shoes, were crunching on, you know, centimetres thick of all of this. Like you were all born of these in the wrong era. You- brown leaves, and I couldn't believe it. Like, I, I had to stop and look. I was like, this is incredible. You need to be, have been born in the romantic era. Oh, no, I'm not romantic at all, so. Really? Come no, on. No, honestly. Yeah, you wouldn't not do wood fires and a nice glass of wine. Oh, yeah, but that's not really romantic. That's just cozy, isn't it? I, I don't know. What's, what's, what's romance these days? I don't know. Okay, we're I gonna, don't even really... I don't know. We'll we're have, getting on a tangent. We're gonna, we'll have to do that one another time. I grew up in a bar. I don't do romance. What the fuck is romance? <laughs> no, like my boyfriend was like, what are we going to do for Valentine's Day? I was like, nothing. What is that? It like, sounds like a commercial adventure to me. Exactly, it's it's. Uh, I don't. It's such a I don't cynic, believe though. in it. No, I'm not at all. I'm not at all. I just don't. I think it's a stupid day. Why? Why? Why do you have to have that day to show that you love someone? I said that about Christmas. You know, what? What is it? Go- why is it goodwill towards men on one day? Why not just 365 days a year? Oh no! <laughs> See? You can apply it in lots of no, ways. No, because Valentine's Day has absolutely no significance to anything. But neither it's does a Christmas. Hallmark. Yes, it does. It's, it's Jesus's birth that's Jesus. been adapted <laughs> to Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what that. But like, what is what is Valentine's Day based off? The birth of a I don't what? Know. I, I, don't, I don't know. Or like what? Easter, Jesus Cupid. died. Cupid. So was Cupid born on Valentine's Day? I don't know, but he's got, a, know, co- he's got a cool like little bow. bow. And <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. See, it's just crap. It's a stupid day. Well, on that note. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) Is is that where we end it? (laughs) Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Yeah, look, actually, in all seriousness, thanks very much for coming on. Apologies for the the error at the beginning. Uh, As I said to Madeline, I'm still just getting used to how this all occurs. But thank you very much. My pleasure. Uh, Madeline is a journalist with Fairfax Southern Highland Highland News. Go to high, what do you? What's the web address? Southernhighlandnews.com.au. And if you want to email me about any story, yeah, can go, I do go this? Ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. If you want to email me about a story at all, it's Madeline M A D E L I N E dot Crittenden C R I double T E N D E N at fairfaxmedia.com.au. Uh, you've got, I assume you've got a Facebook and a not a Facebook, a Twitter or yes, my Twitter is Mad J Crittenden. Ma- oh, it's like Mad J, like Mad Mad, Mad J. No, no, nah, just my middle name is Josephine. Okay, so well there so you go, you heard it here. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, next podcast will be a beekeeper. Stay tuned.